Read junk. Read junk. Read junk. Podcast. Read them podcast with your host, my guy. What's up, everybody? This is the Read Junk Podcast, and I'm your host, Brian Kremko. I'm back with a brand new episode. This time it's with New Jersey's ska punk band, Backyard Superheroes. Um, I talked to the sax players, Gary and Becky, over Skype, and like I knew it would, it was a fun interview. Uh, we talk about show mishaps, the history of the band a little bit, their newest album, Rick and Morty, whether or not they'll do a cover album, and then later on we geek out a little bit and talk about comic book movies, comics, video games, Star Wars, and at the end of the episode we play a little bit of Gold Bloom trivia. I brought it back this episode. Um... I have about four other interviews that I have lined up with some people. I won't reveal who they are yet. I'm hoping to do a lot this year, so got to get moving with doing more more interviews per month. Uh, right now, it just seems like it's once a month, but trust me, I have a lot of people I want to talk to this year. If you like the podcast, be sure to review it on iTunes. Tell your friends about it. Spread the word as much as you can because I can really use the help. I'm also posting a lot more on Instagram, so if you haven't liked the Instagram page yet, be sure to do that and like every post and share it, uh, all that good stuff. So let's get into it. This is Gary and Becky from the Backyard Superheroes right now on the Rejunk Podcast. Yeah, so I'm talking with the Backyard Superheroes from New Jersey. Uh, where in New Jersey are you guys exactly? Like, I mean, you're probably all over the place, right? In Central? Is it Central? I would say Central Jersey is a good place that we were to say we're from yeah Um, new brunswick area right so anywhere in the new brunswick area so would that be your scene i guess i mean like well you always play starline ballroom that's how i know you guys from yeah safe to say um you know definitely played a lot of new brunswick shows okay um few and far between now but uh yeah new brunswick starland we haven't played asbury recently which is a huge bummer yeah. yeah, but I'd say that the Jersey Shore and the New Brunswick scene is probably where we're... I don't really know if there's a scene, per se. It's whoever will let us play, I guess. That's our scene. Oh, okay. <laughs> None of those dealies. Yeah, I mean, you guys you guys are a great live band, so I don't know why you haven't been getting around to like other areas of like New York or Connecticut or... We are lazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I get that way, too. <laughs> <laughs> No, actually, it's funny. We just played Brooklyn for the first time ever, and it was for a six-year-old's yeah. birthday party. Yes, yeah, for a six-year-old birthday party. Oh, it was so much fun. Yeah, it was awesome. That's <laughs> our market we found. Well, <laughs> kids love our music. Well, how, how come you didn't do a music video for that, for during that? <laughs> yeah, probably should have done that. <laughs> Next time we play a six-year-old's yeah. birthday party, which will happen, I'm sure. That's yeah. when we'll do it's it. It's like me first in the Gimme Gimme's play that bar mitzvah, you know, and they did a whole album of that. You guys should have kind of taken advantage of that. <laughs> yeah. Damn. Yeah, missed the opportunity. <laughs> next time. There, there will more. be next time. Yeah, so next time will be all kids' music, probably. <laughs> well, Mike Mike Park has a whole album or not a record label of just that the fun fun records. It has children's music. You guys would be you know geared towards that. Yeah, I was, I was actually looking up today if you guys had any dinosaur songs because my kid just loves dinosaur songs. Uh, <laughs> we have like a lot of dinosaur logos and a dinosaur mascot, but no dinosaur songs. Yeah. yeah. Next time we we see you, we'll give you one of our dinosaur shirts and like a small so it can be for your kid. Great, thank you. Yeah, you'll love that. Um, I wanted to talk about. Um, Gary, like the first time I, or, or it was like maybe two years ago, I saw you play at Starland Ballroom and, mm-hmm. and, uh, I saw you start playing on the bar top and <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm starting with this. Um, and I'm like, this is not going to end well, just either because the club's not going to appreciate it or, and then I guess and it's Josh told me later on, like last year, uh, that you broke your foot or something. Um, so tell so me that, about that. That's not the first time that I've done that. I've I've done that a bunch of times. Just that time, for whatever reason, when I jumped off the bar, I happened to land, and as soon as I landed, I went, "Oh no, that's not good." Did you like wobble? Yeah, I broke, I broke my foot. I broke two bones in my foot. And you still played after that, right? You were playing on a stage after that, or did you? Yeah, yeah. yeah. We fin- I finished the set, and as soon as we got off, I think I even said to Becky, uh, "I think I broke my foot." <laughs> yeah. yeah, I just looked at him like. What do you mean? You think you broke your foot? The um the story the story is even better. So I got married two months after that. Oh jeez. And I was on crutches till the day before my wedding. 
It's a miracle. You should have like um, you should have done doc- the think- Willy Wonka whole thing. <laughs> I, no, I think my foot was still broken. And the doctor just felt you know bad for me and said, "Yeah, you're clear." Oh, <laughs> see, you should have done the Willy Wonka thing where you like he then done the crutches and then throw them off. <laughs> All and right. <laughs> well, next time I break my foot, and there will probably be a next time, probably at a kid's birthday party, then uh, yes, I'll do that when I'm healed. Stepping on Legos. Yeah, yeah. Oof. That's me daily. <laughs> yeah, that, that just hurt thinking about that. It's like, and now it, it it's Legos and and dinosaurs, so it's all like the pointy <laughs> ones, like Triceratops and Stegosaurus ones. I'm stepping on all the time. I'm like, these fucking hurt. <laughs> you know, you know, we're at Becky's house right now, and there there could be Legos and dinosaurs everywhere here too. It looks like a kid here. <laughs> there are no Legos anywhere. So oh. Actually, wait, that's a that's a lie. I have a Rick and Morty Lego set right over nice. here. Yeah, I have, I have a Mr. Meeseeks uh, Funko on my. It's kind of weird though. It's, it's sitting on my computer at work, and like the head's like really top heavy, so it always falls down. So I have to like leave uh, against yeah. another one. <laughs> and it didn't come with the stand or anything. Now, no. mind you, I'm going to move the camera a little bit. It's all right. Um, let me see. Where is? Oh What's wow. There's. Oh yeah. There, there's my shelf. There's wow. You're, my, you're my one of those people. Yeah, my thumbnail is really tiny. Yeah, I'm a Funko guy too. Nothing wrong. Funkos are cool, man. Funkos are awesome. But I yeah, love it. We, we don't <laughs> It definitely looks like I could live. Looks what's like a, there's a child living. What's up, Mr. Meeseeks? Mr. Meeseeks is from Rick and Morty. That's the it's he like, was like the I'm Mr. creature Meeseeks, that didn't really exist. Yeah. Existence is pain. I've never <laughs> seen I've never seen Rick and Morty. Oh, oh I, I think you would like it. Um, Probably, it takes yeah. it, it took me about five episodes to really get into, which was the Mr. Meeseeks episode. Yeah. Um, after that, I was hooked on it. Um, yeah, they just keep doubling and doubling and doubling and doubling. Mm. And then they all just like, they all go back and forth. They go, he roped me into this. But he roped me into this. He roped uh, me. It's just. It's yeah. like being in a ska band. We just keep doubling and doubling and doubling. Pretty much. Yeah, <laughs> more and more of us. Mr. Meeseeks, and somebody else going, he roped me into this. Mr. Meeseeks would have been great in a ska band, actually. That's our next Halloween idea for yeah. Halloween. Sounds like a good band name I too, saw Mr. Meeseeks. At, at Comic-Con, <laughs> there's been a lot of great uh, cosplay of Mr. Meeseeks. <laughs> I'm like, man, you guys are brave, like with this, like very revealing spandex and stuff. <laughs> Challenge accepted. Oof. Yikes! All right, I can't unsee that. <laughs> <laughs> um. So, as musicians, what were like your influences as as maybe in life, but in just like what bands did you guys get into that say, I want to do this? I mean, not for. I mean, you don't do it for a living. You know, you probably want to, but. <laughs> <laughs> But like, back, back. You can go first. Yeah, I uh, yeah, my first ska experience was uh, I might be aging myself here, but GameCube and playing Donkey Konga. Mm. Uh, the impression that I get was one of the songs to play along to. So I was like, this is this is really really cool. And um, so I'm a I'm actually originally a clarinet player turned saxophone player. Oh. Uh, so like obviously like the band kids were all like, oh, this is great, this is really cool. So in high school, we all really loved Real Big Fish. Um, Streetlight Manifesto, the first time I ever saw them was in 2005, which I know there's a whole debate. Are they ska? Are they not? But, you know, that was really like, <laughs> and plus I'm also from East Brunswick. So there's the huge following of Catch-22 is, you know, from the area playing at Rutgers and Streetlight is also from the area too. So, um, you know, that was kind of like one of those things where I'm like, this is cool. But we all really love Real Big Fish. Less Than Jake was great too. Um, I mean, obviously we still really admire them. So for me, that was one of my big ones, but also getting into old Save Ferris too. I was like, oh, wow, there's a girl who's singing too. Like, this is awesome. Like, I would love to do that. What? I love Save Ferris. Oh, yeah. Old Save Ferris, new Save Ferris. Love it all. Yeah. I just, I'm conflicted about, you know, the, what they did in terms of resurrecting Save Ferris, but, well, you know, she wants to do it. No one else wants to, I guess. I don't, I guess that's how it is. Yeah, how it is. exactly. But taking it at face value, like the music's still enjoyable. It still brings me back to a fun place. So, you know, I know Monique was a huge influence on me. Um, but like, always loved Hepcat. Um, Dude, Hepcat's rad. Hepcat is so rad. Yeah, they need to come back here. It's like they always do, like, they'll do like the South or do one of those boat cruises things or just the mm-hmm. West Coast all the time. Yep. It's really frustrating. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> last, last time I saw them was like maybe 20, 21 years ago or something like that. Holy oh, cow. Yeah, I've never seen Hepcat. For the um, New England my, Ska Fests in like Massachusetts somewhere, yeah, it was it, my, was, uh, it was originally supposed to be Bad Manners, but then 
but then they canceled or something like that. So then they got Hepcat to come come and do it. I think, uh, and this is my radical ska opinion there, uh, that's an improvement. There, I said it. I threw down the gauntlet there. <laughs> I like Hepcat more than Bad Manners. Yeah, now I guess it's... Now stand on Bad Manners. <laughs> I guess it depends who who you ask, I guess, yeah. Um, I, like, um, I like both bands. I can't really decide who. They're, 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 they're different, you know. It's, it's mm-hmm, two-tone mm-hmm. and like whatever Hepcat is. The rock state. So Gary, I mean, so I always, I always thought you reminded me of Dave from Edna's Goldfish. I don't think you ever seen. I don't know if you ever saw Edna's Goldfish before. We were literally just in the car listening to Edna's Goldfish. That's what I was listening to today. Uh, better, better you, better than no before. What's the name of that album? Better before something. you know better. I think before you know better. Yes, yeah. I'm your density. We're listening to that in the car. Yes. Um, I got into. So I was never really into music growing up. I really liked horror movies. And from loving horror movies, I got really into thinking that Kiss would be really cool. I'm like, oh, they must be like a horror band. They're not, but they became my favorite band and still are my favorite band to this day. And then from Kiss, I got into like classic rock and then started getting into punk rock and went to my first ska show in, here's how I'm going to date myself, dude, 2000 when I was in high school or middle school. And I used to see all the old school Jersey bands, um, Too Short Notice, Spectre 7, um, uh, now I'm blanking on all of them, even though I used to see them all the time. Catch 22. Uh, anyway, we'll go, Catch 22, One Cool Guy, that whole scene, I was to- all about Professor that. Plum, um, Professor Plum, Day 19. Professor Plum, I still have a Professor Plum shirt to this day. They would play like uh, every show. <laughs> yeah, so I was really into the New Jersey ska scene, and then I kind of love ska, and I think... Um, Becky says it all the time. There's nobody that knows more about ska than me. I Honestly, listen to all of them. Gary is like the ska encyclopedia. The ska, yeah. cy- ska encyclopedia? Ska yeah, encyclopedia. Yeah. We'll call so, him that. Sure. But that's how I got into it. And ska I played dictionary. in a bunch of bands. <laughs> I played in a bunch of bands. And then I even actually got to play with Inspector 7. I was in Inspector 7 for a while, which is kind of cool. Yeah, they keep going in and out of different lineups, I guess. I guess they're playing next week in Brooklyn. Uh yeah, Inspector oh, 7. Oh, yeah, I saw that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I played in, I played a, a St. Patrick's Day show in Brooklyn with Inspector 7, which was pretty rad. But huh, um, I didn't know that. I couldn't, I couldn't manage two bands, so I did not stay in Inspector 7. <laughs> yeah, I can't imagine just managing one band, let alone two. <laughs> um, so yeah. what was, your, like, your first ska show that you remember going to? Like, what was the first one? The band that got me hooked was this band from Florida called The Spit Valves. You ever heard of them? Um, yeah, but I don't, I, I know the name, not the music though. Oh, they're awesome. I still love them. But I saw them at the North Branch Firehouse. It must've been 2000 or 2001. And I was like, wow, this music is like, wow, this is really different than what I, what I'm used to. Like, I was, like I said, I was in the classic rock queen and kiss and that type of stuff. And I'm like, well, this is really different. Um, and I was like, this is, this is my people. These are all, you know, nerdy people who are just having a good time. And so that was the first band that got me hooked to spit valves and the first, like, bigger ska band I saw was the Boston's when they were on the tour when they were on tour for a pay attention, which is actually my favorite Boston's record too. Wow. That's my like least favorite. <laughs> that's what everybody says. No one likes that record, but it, you know what? It was the one that I listened to first. So yeah. that's kind of my gateway record, you know? Yeah. Everyone's got a different, yeah. I mean, mine was like, uh, the first two albums. Um, cause my, my friend was a big Boston fan. So I'm like, who the fuck's this band? <laughs> You know that that's the show that you saw us at, saw us at where I broke my foot was the Boston. Show. Right, right, that's right. Yeah, that was a good one. I think that was, was a good one. I mean, so do, what do you think is your favorite show as uh, at the Starland so far? I guess because you guys play there pretty much every Scott show there. Yeah, we play there. We play there quite a bit. So I don't know, Becky. What do you think? Uh, the show with the Boston was really great. Um, even though Josh wasn't there, we had a substitute singer, but that was just right. a fun show. Um. You know, the, the last one we just played, Skanksgiving. I think you were that that one. We played yep. there day after Thanksgiving in 2018. It was really cool, even though I was in a cranky mood because we got our set cut a little bit, so I was pretty Everyone's angry. Everyone's set was but cut. Was, I was like, what the I know, is this 20-minute set shit? I was like, I was actually happy that it, because I'm an old man, I was like, all right, you can get me home by 11. Go home early. <laughs> yeah. But at the same time, it's like the crowd really liked you guys, and it was like... They were really into you, and it's just kind of, and it's like same thing with like Ballyhoo. Like Ballyhoo's like pretty big, and like right. they had to cut their set short because I guess Aaron wanted to leave or something. <laughs> yeah, something like that. Yeah. But we yeah. uh, we we really like playing there. I think we always have a we're like kind of like the hometown heroes who you can count on them to be at every ska show there, and we have a good following, and I, we always have a great time. That's I think where we always put on probably our best show because it's yeah. just the energy from everybody there just feeds us a little bit. Yeah, we've built a really great rapport with. Uh with everybody there too. So like, it's to the point where 
whenever the security staff finds out that we're playing, they specifically request to work that yeah. night too, <laughs> which well, is fantastic nice. because you know, it, obviously it just creates such a great environment for everybody. Like our fans are always super cool. We've never had an issue really with anybody at Starland. Mm-hmm. Like, cause there are some shows that you go to and you're like, this crowd's awful. And like, yeah. we're, you know, everybody's just inconsiderate and rude of each other. But you know, we walk into Starland and I, I never get like mushy and sincere about this kind of thing, but like you just feel the love there, which mm-hmm. is, which is really, really nice for us. Yeah. yeah when the bouncers are requesting to, to work your show, that's a cool feeling. Yeah. And it's good that the bouncers like like us so they can catch us as we fly around. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, they are very nice bouncers. I was like talking to that one guy that's been there for ages, the bald the bald like the bald dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he rubbed his head when we play. Yeah. <laughs> we were just having this conversation the other night too <laughs> about about that, but yeah, you know, it's super cool. They've really stepped it up too. So, which is which is very nice that, you know, the, yeah. the experience for everybody both performers and and um, attendees has just yeah. been and they always you know mo- i mean i'm not i don't think we've ever had a venue who didn't treat us with respect but most you know they treat us really well there they take care of us yeah um so what was your scene so you went to like mostly like trenton or new brunswick and that kind of stuff you guys ever venture out to new, new york city or philly <laughs> for shows i went to philly a lot there's a yeah. couple f- bands i really liked out of philly i um SGR, they're down from South Jersey, Philly. I saw them a lot when I was younger at the Trocadero. Was that the club in Yeah, Philly? the Troc, yep. Troc, yeah, I would used to go there a couple times. And then I went to the city a few times to see ska shows. But I was, again, I was in high school. Getting to the city in high school is difficult. Yeah. I mean, how far away yeah. from where you guys live is New York City? Like an hour and a half? Like an hour on the train, yeah. Okay. Oh, so you take the train in? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh. Yeah, most of us actually, we live pretty much like right along, most of us live along the uh, North Jersey coastline, so it's super convenient for us to just hop on a train and we're pretty much there. Well, so When New Jersey Trans is working. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's the other half of the battle. Too. Yeah, it's like, yeah. okay, how are we running today? <laughs> I worked uh, I worked in the city for three years, so um, which was really cool, but the thing about working in the city is when you work there, you just want to go home. Yeah. You know, you don't, I didn't, so I, I think... I worked in the city for three years, and I went to one show in those three years. I saw Five Iron Frenzy, and that's it. I never really took advantage of all the good shows that came. Well, the out. Was that the show they played like three years ago? Yeah, with uh, the Toasters. No, no, oh, not that okay, one, no. okay, that was at um, crap. Where was that? Was that some club that just recently got shut down? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, Santo Party don't... House. Yes, that's oh. it. That's it. Yes, yeah. yes. Okay. yes. Thank you. Oh my God, that was going to bug me all day. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I know the place got shut down for hosting not so nice parties. <laughs> oh, jeez! <laughs> yeah. I think the last show I saw there was Mad Caddies, and across the aisle, I think. Uh, oh, was... across the aisle! I like that band. Well, yeah, be Mag. I don't think they're a band anymore because Meg's down in North Carolina now. But because uh, uh, she was in North, because uh, she, she was in Rude Boy George, and then she left. And, yeah, yeah. Um, we just played with uh, Mad Caddies last year. Yes. Yeah, last year. They're cool people. Yeah, we played at House of Independence with them down in Asbury. That was probably the last time we actually played Asbury Park. Yeah. How was that uh, venue? House of Independence. Oh, it's a great venue. Yeah. 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 If I'm going to play Asbury, that's my top choice to play in Asbury. Yeah, it's... uh... There, I said it. I said it. I'm not throwing shade (laughs) at any other venues in Asbury Park, but that's my favorite one. Yeah, I... Do you happen to remember what that venue was before it was... No. Because, yeah, like, it's just... It was one of those weird things where I think, at least in my experience, like... My first concert ever was Taste of Chaos in 2005 mm. at Asbury Park nice. Convention Hall. Okay. So, and like back then, like nothing was built, like the boardwalk wasn't even really a thing. And it was the kind of place where everything was just burned out and broken down. I saw so, Warped Warp Tour 98 there. Yeah. It was, we oh was, my gosh. We, we, called oh, it, so, yeah. we called it Asbury yeah, Bay, no. Beirut because it was, was so run down. And now yeah. it's like, <laughs> now it's like now super it's high Asbury. end on the beach and stuff. It's like, mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But, uh, but yeah, it's kind of funny with all the growth down on Cookman, like I, at least for me personally, like I just totally lost track of everything. Cause I'm like, Oh, there's something new here. This is awesome. Yeah. So and house of independence is one of those things where I'm like, Oh yeah. When did this pop up? I don't even remember what was there beforehand, but it's really cool. It's a, it's a bi-level, uh, venue. The floor area is pretty big. Um, even for a sold out show though, it does not feel like it's yeah. sold okay. out. Um, if, if you prefer to be away from everybody, you can just stay at the upper balcony. There's a bar up there, which is nice and comfortable. Um, you know, the merch area for bands is in the same spot too. So you're never far away from anybody. And you know, it's really, it's just yeah. nice to be able to like go eat a massive sandwich from speak eatery and then go over to the show. 
Um, it's actually right by the beer garden and um, Asbury Park Distilling, too. So those are both pretty top-notch spots okay. where, you know, if you happen to be in there before or after a show, you might see somebody that you just saw inside the venue. So so you should come see us next time we play there, sir. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's awesome. It's really, oh. really cool. Sound was great, too, which is fab. Green room was nice. Every time I go to Asbury Park, something usually happens. I went to the Fat Wreck showcase thing that they did for like 20 25 years uh, mm-hmm. the whole tire show all day get there and might have a flat tire so i go that was one issue and then and then the year after was the punk rock bowling and then i was i think it was like cox bar was playing or about to and i threw up and i was like got food poisoning or, or no i thought I've, it was like a stomach bug or something like that then having to drive home like that so i had to like cut short of cox bar's set and then t- puking along the way on Garden State Parkway pullover. <laughs> so it seems like every time I go there, it's like as much as uh, I want it, they have so many good shows there too. So it's, I have to get down there this summer because it just seems like there's... After Paris. Yeah. <laughs> the what? Be your good luck charm. Yeah, when you come see us, that'll oh, be the, right. the, the time it goes well, right? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> well, there's also that. the Wonder Bar and then, well, Stone Pony, yeah, but I don't know whether there's been... Wonder Bar's is. great. Do they still have the Asbury Lanes? Is that still open? Or like... So under- it... It's a new type of Asbury Lanes. That we had played there before it closed a couple times, and now there's a lot of controversy around, like, some people don't like it. It's a lot more commercial now. I don't okay. really have an opinion on it. Yeah. Um, yeah, the the new lanes, people, I don't think they should have called it the lanes because they really did tear down most of what it was to make is there, it. Is there bowling in it still? Or? There is, yeah, yeah. There yeah. is still bowling. It's um, it's digital bowling, which the great thing about the lanes was everything was analog, you know, pencil and paper. Like, yeah. you know, that was that. But yeah, it's definitely, it definitely has new life in it. Um, a lot of the, the regulars from, you know, the 90s, early 2000s are, you know, not happy with the change. And I get it. Change is hard. But the way that I look at it is better for a place to be reopened and rejuvenated than condemned because the way that I saw it and especially having some inside knowledge too, the lanes were pretty much about to be condemned. Mm. Um, <laughs> like punk rock. You know, just see it. <laughs> yeah. Right. It's like, all right, that's, that's cool and everything, but you know, it, we all want to be safe when we, when we go somewhere, I don't want to have to go to a show and worry that a roof is going to cave in or, oh, yeah. you know, have a tile fall on my head. Cause that was a true story. I had a tile fall on my head multiple times Ooh. at the plane. So <laughs> I, I <laughs> but, felt like that know, for like, certain venues, like Webster hall when like when everyone um, would be bouncing up and down or the ch- their chance at Poughkeepsie, it feels like, <laughs> Oh shit, this balcony is going to go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's horrifying. It's like nobody should have to, you know, that's not a good experience for anybody. But, you know, the new the new Asbury Lanes, I've seen a couple shows there. Um, I saw the Hold Steady there and I saw Thursday there. Man, I love Um, the Hold Steady. I do, too. I want to see them. Oh, they're great. They put on a great show. Um, But the sound is great. It's a comfortable place to be. But, you know, definitely has some. I'll, I'll call it gentrified charm to it. <laughs> it's like Asbury so, now, yeah. <laughs> that, exactly. Yeah, it's, they had to keep up with the times, so yeah. I get it. Um, so. so going back, when did the, like, so give me a little bit of history about Backyard Superheroes, because I really don't know a whole, like, about the history. Like, so who started the band? I mean, Becky, I don't think you were in the band from the beginning, right? No? Nope. Okay. I was. <laughs> yeah, Gary's one of the founding fathers. Yeah, so... Wait, can you even see him? Yeah, I can, oh, there he is. I can okay, see him. Now yeah, see that's him. fine. Um, so okay. they was, the band was... Um, Josh, who's the singer of the band, Matt, the rhythm guitar player, and Greg, the bass player, were putting a band together. They wanted to do like a pop-punk band. I think they were all in a different ska band. Um, and I, at the same time, was also looking to join a new band. I, I had played in a lot of ska bands and kind of took some time off for like five years. I would, didn't play any music. So I was looking to get back into it, and um, we connected. That was 2012, so we're coming up on our seven-year anniversary this year, believe it or not. April 2012 was our first uh, first practice that we ever had together, and our first gig ever was in May, and I wore my, my homemade Robin costume, and the rest was history. I've seen those photos, yeah. <laughs> So like early on, the band was like, oh, we're going to do like an Aquabats thing where everyone wears costumes. And I'm like, oh, OK, I guess that's fine. And then we only did it for one show and it never really stuck. But I, I wore shorts that show and I've worn short shorts every show since then. I guess that's kind of my trademark. 
Yeah, I guess some some other people in other bands do the short shorts. I think was it Jimmy Doyle and uh, the Fad wears these super short shorts. <laughs> what you're saying is that I'm not as original as I think I am. Okay, <laughs> thanks for pointing I, that out. I think Appreciate there's it. other people that do it too. Yeah, I th- but I think <laughs> okay. if you wearing your Robin co- costume, I think was a little more original. I think. Yeah, that that was never gonna uh, stay permanent though. I, I think for the 10 year anniversary, you should go get that costume yeah back. yeah we've thought about that like when we just did our record release show someone asked if i could wear the robin costume and um i cannot fit in that anymore that was seven <laughs> years ago and like most of us i'm a different size than i was seven years ago yeah, me too dad bod but that, yeah, that's the history of the band so and then we've you know rotated through a ton of different members um as most ska bands do but um josh matt greg and myself have always been permanent and then we um you know, had a bunch of different horn players and drummers, but I, I think, and I'm not just saying this, but, and I know everyone says this, the lineup we have right right now is, is the best lineup we've ever had. So, I mean, Because Becky's there, you know? Because we have oh, Becky. Wow, Aww. 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 Wait, we're not supposed to be nice to each other. Oh, yeah, yeah. We're, so we're still we're, in the battle of the We're saxes. social media feuding right now. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, how did you reach out to other members? Like, do you, like, do Facebook or friends with your friends or, like, like, like how do you reach out? Um, do any tryouts? See, so, we did. We do try out sometimes when we add new members, but uh, yeah, I guess we just kind of you know use the internet to our advantage when we're trying to find somebody. Um, Becky was a friend of the band who I, we had kind of known for a long time, just coming to shows, and it was just a natural fit there. And then Becky knew um, Aaron, who's our new trumpet player from work, so she brought her in. Um, but anyway, it's just all connections. We we've posted stuff online or have known you know just known people differently through different avenues. Okay, it's not hard to find. Uh, musicians it's hard to find good musicians but it's not hard to find musicians in new jersey oh and people that like ska too yeah want to play ska. well it was really yeah it was super funny too because when i was asking erin so it's funny um half of the band we've all worked in the same place um most of us at different times so like myself and ryan worked together at this old job um and then ryan left and then i stayed and then erin uh, transferred to to the same job too. So I maybe only worked with her for like a week and a half, two weeks or so, and I was getting ready to leave for my next adventure. And um, and I was like, hey, I'm like, you're a trumpet player, right? I'm like, I read that about about you in your bio for when you you know transferred here. She goes, yeah, what's up? <laughs> and, well, no, it was funny the way I asked her. I'm like do you know anyone that also plays trumpet that would like to be in a ska band? She goes, uh, yeah, me. I was like, oh, <laughs> I'm like, that was easy. I was yeah. like, yeah, cool. Come hang out with us. So, yeah. you know. So that's how it happened. A lot of people worked at the same place, which is, uh, you know, a tech company with fruit involved. Yep. <laughs> ah. Yeah. We're all, we're all a bunch of nerds. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna put this out on the line. We, yeah. I in our adult lives. We're, I do have, <laughs> we're towards, a lot of, towards the end, I have a lot of geeky questions yeah. to ask you guys. So it's, <laughs> okay. Uh, cool. I would love shoot, shoot. Yeah. Well, I'll I'll do that a little later. Um, I wanted to talk about okay. the, the newest album though, because "Never Give Up, yeah. Never Surrender, Never Surrender" came out in September. Mm-hmm. I love the Galaxy Quest nod. <laughs> so I mean, how, how how long did it take to record it and like all that kind of stuff? Forever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, that was like um, I think it probably took us about six months to record the record. Um, just because, as you know, with a ska band, or maybe you don't know, but as you can imagine with a ska band, yeah. it's really difficult to get everybody together when you have seven or eight people yeah, we actually, trying to work on something. We actually had just started recording the album about this time last year. Yeah, around this time last year, and they were released it in September. So okay. that puts it into perspective for you. But um, we recorded it at um, Wild House, which is our drummer's. Uh, he has his own recording studio. Oh, and nice. He has done our past two records, and they sound awesome, so can't recommend him enough. Um, but yeah, it took us maybe about a year to write that record because we were just gigging a lot and, and we're, and we just finished Let's Get Dangerous, the EP before that. So once we got around to, to never give up, never surrender, it took us about six months and we were really happy when it came out because I think that the, you know, the name is kind of, um, appropriate. One, it has a, a, you know, a geeky reference, which we love, but also, um, was about, you know, to me, it represents like perseverance, right? That record took a long time to make. We filtered a lot of band members, kind of some had some turmoil while we were writing it and said, do we still want to continue being a band? So when it came out, and I think it was really appropriately titled. Mm. Well, I mean, what happened? What was going on that you guys wanted to just hang it all up? 
Um, just, you know, behind the music type of band drama type of stuff, you know. <laughs> yeah. we'll, we'll see yes, that happens, happens in DIY ska bands too, I mean, not just Warren and yeah. Molly Crew. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, when there, when there are that many people in a band, I mean, granted, I wasn't really um, internally involved in a lot of that kind of stuff. I only have, I only heard, like, you know, thing whisperings if you will but it was you know it's one of those things where with with that many people in a band you know you can't always expect everybody to agree on everything all the time and mm -hmm. that's perfectly okay yeah so but it's just one of those things where it's like all right well eventually you have to compromise right i think i think if anything being in a ska band has uh taught all of us how to how to learn to compromise mm -hmm. <laughs> and mm -hmm. to level with one another yes. yeah because um, how many people are in a band like seven eight right eight, 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 eight currently yeah okay. yeah okay. So yeah. that's a lot of people, a lot of different yeah. lives and schedules and you know, schedules, opinions. Yeah. Musical expertise, musical opinion. So because you look at like you look at Matt and he's a metal guy. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> you know, you look at me and I, I like lo-fi indie, but also ska. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So there's there's a lot of there's a lot of diversity there, which helps. But it's a blessing and a curse, as I call it. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's good to. Yeah have a wide range of people that like different things. Sometimes you get, For sure. get a better result. Um, who did the album artwork? Cause I really like that. Um, like superhero type, you know, it kind of went very fitting with the, you know, your name and what you guys sing about. <laughs> yeah. That was an artist that I found on Instagram actually. Oh, wow. Um, she, she did artwork for like a real big fish picture. Then I, I followed real big fish page and they, they reposted it. I'm like, oh, this artwork's really cool. That would be kind of in line with what we want to do. And she's from Australia. What was her name? Alina. Alina. Yeah, Alina from Australia. Um, she goes by what? Boogie Bandit? Bandit Boogie. That's Bandit right. Boogie. That's her That's her artist name, okay. Bandit Boogie. And she um, she's an artist in Australia. I reached out to her. I said, hey, we, you know, we I love what you did. That's kind of in, in line with what our style of, uh, of branding is. And she goes, okay. And she, I kind of gave her a couple ideas. And she ran with it. And we're like, yeah, this is great. Really cool. Yeah, it's yeah, it's really good stuff. Super um, fun, super bright, yeah. super like in, you know poppy, which is fun. It kind of represents the band well. Yeah, again, going back to social media and social networking, it's like you literally never know who you're gonna find and what they can, how they can impact you, which mm -hmm. is awesome. It was super easy too because literally she was just emailing us proofs back and forth, and even with payment, I was like, all right, great, like let me just PayPal you. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, perfect. Yeah, so it's... it worked. Social media has definitely been like it helps out a lot of smaller bands, and sometimes it's you know sometimes it's a blessing and a curse you know for social media yeah. with saying the wrong things, but for bands it's great. And what do you feel about like the like digital age of just like Spotify? Like, do you, I mean, you have all your music on there, but do you think bands should be getting paid more, or you know, or for for streaming and all that stuff? I, I don't know. I don't know. We've never actually discussed that. I mean, we make a lot of our music free um, on like Bandcamp or Spotify or streaming. Personally, myself, I don't have an opinion on it. I could go either way. I I, I still pay for, for the music that I, I really want to pay for. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I usually if I check out a band and I really dig them, I know that might not be the right approach. But if I check out a band on Apple Music or online and I really dig them, I'll go out of my way to buy their record. But it's it's really difficult when all the music you want is pretty much free at your fingertips, you know? Yeah. yeah, I I think everybody will agree that artists should be getting paid more. They should definitely be seeing more of a cut. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I think in our in our situation, we're not I don't I wouldn't go as far as to say we're career musicians as a band. Yeah. You know, all of us are kind of agreed or we're all in the same boat where it's like, all right, well, we like our nine to fives and we like having uh, you know, other thing, yeah. <laughs> and this other thing is really fun to do. And if we make some money from it to buy some food or whatever, that's cool. But otherwise it's, it's all good. Yeah. Right. And if we make enough money to invest it right back in the band, you know, if we buy, if we buy new shirts, if we can, you mm -hmm. know, if we can offer new merch or, yeah. you know, we're even... completely DIY. Like we have never done like a fundraiser or a Kickstarter really for any, for at least our most recent records. We funded those ourselves. We funded our tour ourselves. Oh, really? And that's where all, oh. yeah. I thought for some reason you guys did the Kickstarter gig. Uh, like kickstart or something the last album but i guess not okay no yeah <laughs> we, we did like pre-orders and stuff and we sell all of our stuff and we try to okay. obviously sell it that way but we didn't we pay everything ourselves and stuff which is you know that's where all the money we make as a band goes back into the band yeah and the way that i see it too is i mean if we make the music accessible to anybody you know they could come to our show i mean we have fans all over the world which is really cool um another thing too with spotify is it's or was it is it through cd baby that uh with the analytics with our music too, where we can see what's being yeah. played, where, 
how many plays. We so. were we're very big in Germany and Russia. We had actually a hit single in Germany, believe wow. it or not. <laughs> yeah, we're like, okay, I guess we got to tour Europe. <laughs> That would be interesting, yeah. You guys should, um, you guys should reach out to maybe specialize where they do like the, for the teenage cancer benefit for each, and they, um, and they they give you a song for an artist to cover, and then you oh, got, okay. and then sometimes they have, and Rubo George did this a few years, uh, for a few years, and they actually went last Thanksgiving. They went over to, to the UK to play it. But so, if they like you enough, they'll ship you guys over there. You guys could play this big ska festival. And, uh, What's it called? It's special, specialized. Spe specialized, yeah. And they, I think this year's like UB40. The previous year was like the jam or the specials or something like that. Cool. They, they pick uh, an nice. album, then you cover like, or Bob Marley. Um, but I, actually, this is a good segue. Uh, I want to ask you, do you have any plans for like a cover album? Like this or EPs? Like, and what songs? Um, would, and what songs would you pick if you had to do that? We have uh, the internal struggle with eight people in a band is finding songs to cover that everyone can kind of agree on. Yeah. So we we have a couple songs like that we cover that are pretty sta that are staples in our our set. We were talking about coming up with some new covers this year and, and diversifying a little bit. Um, I'm not sure if we'd ever do a covers EP. I would be totally cool with it. That's not something we've ever talked about before. Yeah, I mean, especially because like between Josh and I um singing ryan even sings too which is cool i think between the three of us and um you know and our musical tastes combined with the vocal ability too we could definitely like bang out something really cool we could do like a nine song yeah ep or something and then just do like a three-way split um but i mean we love covers we love trying to find we have a role in the band and that's to not cover a currently uh operating ska band yeah we're never gonna play <laughs> sellout that's my one rule yeah. like, you don't we can't play it if you yeah. can't play it better or differently than the artist then there's no reason really in my opinion to do it yeah so it's actually it's a lot of fun when we try and um think about like okay like what can we cover today so uh a couple months ago i suggested i was like let's do a run around sue cover I'm yeah like, so that's our newest cover we're covering run around i'm all Sue's. for that that yeah. sounds good yeah yeah and then of course if you i mean you've seen us live we play knowledge from operation ivy yeah. every single show that's the, song, the only song we played every single set. That's our, our yeah. staple there. Yeah, Rock Show is in our back pocket yeah. and uh, True Believers. True Believers. Bouncing and if you're really, really lucky. But they're still, they're still a old band, though. Why are you covering punk bands, but why not a ska band? I don't, I don't know. We have these weird <laughs> cool yeah. I was going to say, if you're really, really lucky, if you catch us on a night when we've had a, a lot of lot to drink, a lot of fun, we will bust out Beastie Boys, Fight for Your Right to Party. <laughs> and uh, if you think me jumping off the bar and breaking my foot is crazy, I've done some really crazy shit while we played that song. <laughs> I sing that song, and it's a good time. Nice. <laughs> what about I think I, brought, I threw my saxophone through the ceiling of a venue in Atlantic City. That was a good time. <laughs> yeah. Is that a boneyard? Boneyard, yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> what, do, what do the club think about that? Uh, they, they're like, they loved us. We were like kind of their like favorite band. So they're like, anytime you guys, it was like a, it was like a dirty, grimy punk rock club. And they're like, yeah, do whatever you want. Like, right okay, on, yeah. You got it. Uh, don't tell me that I'll do it. Yeah. yeah right in the heart of Atlantic city. Too. Yeah. And that's a scene that needs a lot of love. Yeah. And, we yeah. love AC. Well, they're getting the warp yeah, tour. They, the warp they are. Yeah, I'm yeah, so excited. Yeah. <laughs> they haven't announced any artists for that yet. Have they? You know, so. I think in, um, beginning of March, you should, uh, okay. Bombard Kevin I... Lyman with some uh, some with some demos, like he doesn't get yeah, that, yeah, like he doesn't get that on enough. there. <laughs> Seriously, yeah. Get some local people there. Come on. Yeah. Um, this is this was a question my friend Joe wanted to um, Creature of War, who's reviewed reviewed your albums a few times, but he wanted to know about okay. like does he do you think people associating Scott with dorkiness and geekiness is a fair assessment, or do you think people are just assholes? <laughs> I I don't. I, I don't know. I guess I can go two, two ways with that. Like, right, not all skies dorky and geeky. Um, you know, I think of the specials, or I think of a lot of two-tone stuff, or even, yeah. like, the band, like, Slackers, or that type of music. Streetlight, you know, there's a ton of bands, or Suicide Machines, I'm just keeping with with non-bands that I don't think are dorky or geeky. <laughs> I don't think it's a fair assessment, but it's also not a wrong assessment. I think, if you look at probably any style of music, you can find, like, a dorky, geeky connection there, probably. Yeah. But um, Ska lends itself that way, to that typical like, oh, I played in marching band and now I play in a ska band. I think that's probably where that connection comes from. Yeah, it's probably that. It just, it's, and people are just assholes too. <laughs> Sometimes people yeah. are assholes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's, I mean, I, I, it's a it's a flag that we we wave proudly. Like I think it's important to 
to be totally okay with who you are and, and not try to hide that. We're, we're all geeky, dorky people, and, and that's just who we are. And we're geeky and dorky about music and geeky and dorky about whatever we want to do. It's very popular Ain't nothing wrong geeky with right now. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Let's get <laughs> geeky. <laughs> um, Josh told me something about, this is online, that he said, oh, that when you guys were on tour or something, you did some touring a little bit, but then you guys almost mm-hmm. died. And then he's like, oh, Josh, Yo, Gary, yeah. uh, Gary tells a little bit, a bit of a better story than I do. So uh, explain yourself. <laughs> so we were in our first, was it our first tour? Yeah, I think it was the first. We went out for, for two extended tours, which were, were a lot of fun. But we were in Pittsburgh, which um, we played a terrible show in Pittsburgh. And it was terrible because there was like four people there. And the, even the opening bands left, which was not a nice thing oh, to do, guys. I hate shows like but, that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But it's what it was like a Wednesday night, no big deal. It was like a thousand degrees, no exaggeration. I think that's actually how much it was. It was a thousand degrees. It was weird. They probably should have recorded that. But it was like a thousand degrees in this club, I don't know, something with a wolf or coyote or something like that in Pittsburgh. We all decided to uh, play in our underwear. It was before we had any females in the band, but we all decided to play in our underwear because it was super hot and there's nobody there, so we're like, oh, okay, let's just do it. Um, after the show, we were already kind of cranky about the show, and then Pittsburgh. I don't know if you've ever been there. No. is mostly made of hills it's like these gigantic hills and we had gotten like lost while we were driving around driving up and down these giant hills like san francisco style hills in our in our van with a with a, um, a trailer behind it so we um were going up this hill and we knew we were gonna have to come down it and matt our rhythm guitar player he was he was our driver and he said guys there's a stop sign at the bottom of this hill i cannot stop because if we stop we won't be able to get up the next hill so i'm just going to go so we said, all right, our lives are in your hands. Go for it. Um, so we, we, he just floored it down the hill, went blew th- right through the stop sign with no regard. Luckily, nothing happened, right? Oh, no. Oh. Over. <laughs> Luckily, nothing happened. That's and okay. then we, we made it right back up the hill. We got to the top of the hill. He turned off the car and said, everybody out. I need a minute. Wow. <laughs> so we all got out. And you know what? Thinking back on it, that was a really bad idea. <laughs> I've done something similar. I got uh, driving in Scranton. I, I was like, drive. Oh my gosh. No, Scranton, it, yeah. yeah because Scranton's it, horrible. Yeah, because it has hills. Um, yeah. But then they have the street singles, like the lights isn't, they're not up where I'm used to it. Like, yeah. And they're on the side. And my friend's like, You just yeah. ran a red light. <laughs> I'm like, Oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's funny. My family is from uh, Northeast Pennsylvania, too. So, like, okay. as a kid, spent lots of time out there. But even then, no matter how much time you spend up there, you just never get used to that. I went to college, <laughs> I went to college out there. So, it's oh, two okay. years old. Yeah, in Keystone College. Outside. Oh, okay. Yeah. That was, that was my scene for a few years in music PA. Uh, what, uh, what bands, ah, what bands okay. were out there? It was. Um, the Menzingers are actually from there. Um, oh, we love the Menzingers. Yeah, so um, but I, I didn't see them play until they played somewhere up around where I used to live in, uh, like Middletown. The Menzingers York. used to be yeah. a ska band before they were the Menzingers. Yes, they were Bob and the Saggots, I think it was called. <laughs> yes, Bob and the Saggots. Yeah. I've been scouring the internet for a recording, but I don't think there are any. Um, but there are some other bands. It was a big hardcore scene. I mean, it still is. So that's what I, was, I would see all that's how i got into like hardcore music was going to all those shows all the time because they had like a um an old club there called cc's and that's now a car mm-hmm. dealership i think but um but yeah it had some i don't know what ska band there was like a band called Ignor- ignoramus i think and the toasters played there all the time and then some other bands but yeah was, that was my scene for a few years and then it was skaters world in wayne new jersey oh i've been to skaters world yeah yeah um i don't know when it closed down though I think like 2099 around then. Cause yeah. I went to one, I think I went to one show there. Yeah. I used to see Ennis Goldfish and Pilfers and those, all those bands play there like all the time. It was great because you could just play video games with all the bands and stuff. And there's people. Do you ever see um, Taxi Cab Samurais? Yes. I think. I just it yeah. I've seen them. I've seen Day 19 a thousand times, which is it's funny. Oh, yeah. It's like now it's Obi from Westbound Trains. <laughs> it's old band. I know. I, when I, because I had seen Day 19 also, and then when I put that together, I'm like, holy cow, Westbound Train. I, I played with them in Hamilton Street, and I indulged in illegal things with them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I miss Sorry, Street. Obi. <laughs> um, but it's, it's, is it true that you never played New York City? So you only did it for the book, for the Brooklyn, for the 6th Yeah, we've never, I don't know how that's panned out. We've played, oh. like, 
20 different states, but never in New York City. Yeah, I think a lot of, anytime we get asked to play in New York City, it's usually, hey, we need you to bring 50 people. Bring um, 50 people on a Tuesday to this club in New yeah. York City. And we're like, you know what? That's not worth our effort. Ugh. Yeah, it gets I don't know why you know, do that. Yeah. It, it's tough, yeah. Yeah, it's all about finding the we're right. Open to, yeah, we're open to the right, the right time and right venue, but. Yeah, the right people looking into us, the right venue. I know we sound really old and lazy, and maybe that's because we are. <laughs> I mean, the reality of it is, who wants to get home at 1 o'clock in the morning on a Tuesday night when you have to be in work for 8.30, 9 o'clock? For sure, yeah. We're Wednesday. old and lazy. Like a couple years ago. Sick days, sick days. In, so a couple years yeah. ago, someone in the band was like, well, you want to play a battle of the bands? I'm like, I'm 30. I don't want to play in a battle of the bands. Yeah. I'm not that I'm above that. Like, I, I'm all for it, but I just don't want to. Yeah, it's it's something for like high school bands, I think. And and we we were there when we first started seven years ago. Like I get it. We we have to earn your your place, and totally, I'm all about it. And we still have to earn our place. You know, we don't. You know, we're not. We don't deserve anything. But I just don't want to do that. Yeah, it's just pure laziness, I guess. What? Yeah. What's the deal with Starland Ballroom and the IHOP? Like every... Okay, so I do you know this because I don't. I, I don't know. I, I've been going to shows there forever, and I don't know what it is. Yes. Okay. So the IHOP is over on Route 18 in East Brunswick, and that's about uh, five minutes from where I grew up as as a kid. That's from okay. my childhood home. So actually, I want to say it was during a Thanksgiving 2013 or 2014, one of those years. I think it was okay. the year that one of the years that mustard uh, mustard plug had played. I probably um, yeah. Yeah. So on. There's just this whole thing. So there's a Denny's right next to that IHOP. Oh, um, okay. So it's always the battle of what's what's the best late night hangout spot? Who has the best <laughs> pancakes and hash browns? Like what what is it? So during this show though, um, on on the on the billboard or on the projector screen that comes down, uh, they had the IHOP ad, and like people just started cheering for it. I guess presumably that were local. Yeah. So it was like all right, great. That night, though, because they had, like, approximately no less than six or seven bands playing, I imagine, you know, full day function, um, whoever runs the uh, the PowerPoint for the projector, <laughs> I, I'm assuming that's what they use, yeah. whoever runs that PowerPoint slideshow, mm -hmm. then started changing up the IHOP ad to the point where, and I mean, gradually through the night, you heard the cheers get louder and louder yeah. and louder and louder. So by the end of the night, it was just a full out roar whenever the IHOP ad came yeah, on. Yeah. So, and then it got to a point, I specifically remember whoever was, was changing up the pictures did not even put the IHOP ad on. Like people just started knowing where in the slideshow <laughs> the IHOP ad was. Because it's the same rotation. It's like, all right, King's yeah. X, Badfish, IHOP. Yeah, it's the same <laughs> rotation. So instead, they put up pictures of, like, pancakes with, like, the smiley faces yeah, on them. Yeah, and funny. they were, like, putting up pictures of, like, bacon with pancakes. And people were just going nuts for it. So it's great sponsorship, obviously, and great business for IHOP. Because, yes, they are a sponsor of Starland Ballroom. Oh, and okay. It's, that I it's, think it's also, like, the type of thing I remember when I was – in high school going to Starland, it's like, all right, we just went to a Scott show. We saw a big D or a real big fish or whoever we saw at Starland. What's open to eat afterwards? Well, IHOP's diner, open. Yeah, diners or diner, yeah. IHOP, yeah. Yeah, my personal opinion, um, Seville Diner on Route 18, that's that's a place worth, worth the money. I hate diners. I said it. I do not what? like eating at diners. They remind me, I because I remember as a kid when you could smoke in a diner, oh, and that yes. always grossed yeah. me out. And now I re I still relate diners to cigarettes, and I can't get over See, that. Maybe maybe that's my age showing too, because I was not. See, yeah, yeah, Becky is younger than me, so oh. she yeah. does not remember that. I, do. <laughs> I, I remember, remember the bowling that, yeah. alley would always be like, you know, it's like you were walking into a cigarette mm -hmm. box. Diners, but... <laughs> should, like smoking and food should not go together. So yeah. that always grossed me out. Well, it's, yeah, it's, but uh, they still have that in Atlantic City too. It just it's like it's yep. disgusting. At the what casinos, the yeah. yeah, it's gross. Oh. Oh. Yep, exactly. So anyway, so that's that's the IHOP thing. It's what we learned about backyard superheroes today is we're <laughs> old and lazy, <laughs> and we like diners more than well, I like diners more than any other. Place. I don't like diners now. Yeah. I like diners because it's a, it's more of a variety of just breakfast. You can get other stuff. So it's, I'm a diners, yeah, a diners person. Yep. Um. Okay. Now we're gonna go into the geeky portion of the interview. Uh, okay. Fabulous. <laughs> if you had a superpower, what would it be? Hmm. My superpower. I mean, so here's the thing, right? I hate when people ask me this because the, as the old saying goes, with great power comes great responsibility. Um, I just think I would, I would honestly, I'm going to go flat out hippie. I would erase all the hate 
and negativity in the world. So you would um, just point to someone and go, and it would be like, hi, and it was like a happy, like a happy pill kind of thing. To take a <laughs> I would, you know what, if I, let me amend this a little bit. If I had a superpower, it would be to instill acceptance and tolerance in everybody. Because let's face it, I mean, our, our scene is very unique. And, you know, we, we pride the scene on being inclusive. And, you know, me just being a person, I'm like, great, like you do you and I'm going to do me and this is wonderful. But, you know, there's life is short and there's no room for hate in, you know, in our in our world and in our time. So if I had the superpower, it would be just just tolerate, just be tolerant of Aww, other people. Becky. See, Becky gave you the <laughs> nice answer. Aww. I want to run really, really fast. <laughs> That's what I want. So run really f- I'm a. I'm a runner and I want to be faster because then I could do more things in the day. And that's what I'd like. That's the superpower I'd like to have. I would, I would do <laughs> teleportation, uh, night crawlers. Like, oh, like, that's a good one. Because I hate fucking traffic. That's like, ugh, I don't like traffic. Okay. Oh, uh, yeah. You're, you're preaching to the right crowd. Yeah. <laughs> All right. All right. So who do you, who See, do you Becky, th- I like Becky's answer. It's like, I would help the world. I'm like, I just want more <laughs> stuff for myself. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> I want to go from one place to the next really quickly. Yes. Yeah, um, yeah. Who do you think is the most useless X Men character? Um, <laughs> Jubilee, because she just shoots fireworks out of her hand. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. I know people hate on Jubilee a lot. I liked her a lot in the uh, 1992 through 1996 X Men cartoon, but uh, you got to cover, cover that theme What's song. That? You got to cover that th- theme song. Yeah. That's a rocking tune there, man. Yeah. Um, I'm going to say Jubilee, even though I like her. She's just. Doesn't contribute much to the team. Yeah, she's kind of whiny too. It's just like a whiny teen. Well, she was a teenager, which is like, a cool dynamic. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm right. I'm right there with you. Now so, that I think about it. All right, so Jubilee. All right, that's a good one. Do, uh, what yeah. do you think is the main issue with DC movies? Or do you, or, or there isn't an, an issue with DC movies? Um, I don't know. I think. I'm not a huge, I'm going to say this, I'm not a huge MCU fan. I like them a lot, but, you know, I like comic books. I read them every day, but I'm not a huge MCU guy. I'm not a huge DC comic movie guy either. I watch them all. I always see them all opening night. But the DC movies are just kind of, like, a little directionless. I think that what, like, a Star Wars has, like, a Kathleen Kennedy or Marvel has Kevin Feige, someone directing the ship, and DC just doesn't have that, you know? Yeah. And they also need to... I don't like dark superhero movies at all, unless like it's Christopher Nolan, but yeah. I really want my superhero movies to be fun. And DC is so goofy and fun. Like if you watch their, their TV, like the flash and the arrow shows, those are so fun. The movies should, should kind of reflect that a little bit. Yeah, they are. They have been thanked to Zack Snyder. I feel like I've gotten a lot darker and just, Mm-hmm. And then the mm-hmm. graphics, just like the CGI has just been kind of muddled. and just... They just don't look good. I saw yeah. Aquaman. And it wasn't a bad movie, but it just didn't look great. And even Wonder Woman, which was 75% of a great movie with a terrible CG ending. Yeah, the ending sucked. All the rest of yeah. it was great. I mean, hopefully they'll replicate in the sequel of something of the first movie. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I, you know what? I'm going to say it. I think Bat- Ben Affleck was a pretty awesome Batman, though. Yeah, I don't know about that. <laughs> I, I'm going to say this right now. Batman Forever is my favorite Batman movie. And then my second favorite one is Batman and Robin. So that puts you into perspective of where I am in my Batman. Yeah, I'm going to hang this interview up now where I think we're done. <laughs> <laughs> I told you I like fun, goofy stuff. So those are like my Batman, you know? Yeah. They're, yeah, they're fun movies. But it's just, yeah, I prefer like the Christopher Bale. Uh, not Christopher Bale. Uh, Christian Bale. Christopher Nolan. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah. And Christopher Nolan, yeah. Like those movies, like those, the Dark Knight was, that was, I think, one of my favorite. And then Guardians of the Galaxy was one of, also my favorite. Yeah, Guardians is fun. I mean, Dark Knight is, is the, the gold standard for superhero movie. That's the best superhero movie ever made, hands yeah. down, in, at least in my opinion. Do you agree? It's pretty good. Pretty good! It's like, the Dark oh. Knight! <laughs> I love Iron Man. I, I mean, Iron Man, I'm going to put Iron Man up there. That's the best MCU movie. Iron Man is great. Yeah. Um, so what do you, what do you think your prediction is for Avengers uh, Endgame? What do you think will happen? Um, I mean, Captain I haven't America, I haven't read the comic book, so I don't know. So, Captain America has to die. It seems like that. Either him or Tony. Tony can't die. From a storyline perspective, Tony has to be the guy who lives and know it was his fault, or somehow he like has to live with that guilt. You know, yeah. I feel like he's a tortured character. Cap has to die because he's 
he's the righteous character. He's the one who could beat Thanos. So that's my prediction is, is Captain America is going to die. And I don't want to see that happen because I like him a lot. But yeah, that's just like... from a storytelling perspective. That's that if I was writing it, that's what I would do is have Captain America die. And Tony has to live with that. Yeah, and I I wonder what's going to happen with the whole snap thing. I whether like Ant Man plays a part with it. With, with Ant Man's my favorite Avenger. Those movies and have I been just, fun. Yeah. Yeah, I haven't. I didn't. I wasn't a huge fan of Infinity War. I I, I like the the standalone what? MCU. I like the standalone <laughs> MCU movies a lot more because they develop the characters more, like Ant Man and the Captain America and the Thor movies. Because they focus on, the Avengers movies to me, just there's a lot going on and they feel very big. I thought. I mean, I I thought that, but I thought they what they did with it worked I, and it was like i was amazed of all like all the characters together it's like how many actors there were and i was like Yee! for sure it was, yeah. it was definitely definitely an achievement definitely got to commend it it's i think that these smaller movies if i was going to name all my favorite mcu movies those would be my favorite ones yeah um what do you think you're looking forward to mo- most this year avengers or star wars why would you even ask me that question? <laughs> the obvious answer is Star Wars Episode Nine, December twentieth, two thousand and nineteen. Star is that, Wars is my is life. that when it's coming um, out? Yes, December twentieth, two thousand nineteen. <laughs> yes, yes, that's when it's coming out. Yes, directed by J.J. Abrams. Yes, yes, yes. I'm looking. I'll speak for myself first, and you can answer. <laughs> Star Wars is my favorite thing in the world. So yes, Star yeah, Wars, I mean, definitely. that's definitely. I could I could skip Avengers. I don't care about that, but I care about Star Wars. Yeah, I'd be looking forward to giving uh, Avengers a chance, but I'm definitely leaning towards star wars it's i'm like, gonna see avengers opening day no doubt yeah but star wars yeah it's something yeah, about I'm that star- opening crawl when you see it it's just like yeah you get all like you're five years old again that's when i first saw yeah i saw yeah. return of the jedi in the in the theater when i was five and no was- star wars star wars to me was that gateway to everything in my life yeah where it, like it opened up that there's this whole pop culture there's all this just all this other stuff out there, and and uh, it probably it drove me to liking music, to liking movies, to liking comic books. So Star Wars is, is my favorite thing, and The Last Jedi is the best Star Wars movie ever made. So really, Dro- wow, dropping that mic right there. As a Star Wars fan who reads every book, reads every comic book, watches every show, Last Jedi is the best Star Wars movie ever made. I liked it. I just, I mean, I, I'm not one of the, the fanboys that was like this fucking sucks and all that kind of stuff. But I, I just thought that they could have done something a little bit different with as far as Luke. Um, you know, what happened to him at the end. And then like, I don't know if we want to go down this road cause we might debate for hours. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but for the most part, I liked it. I, I think I like a force awakens better. Um, cause this, cause it felt, I felt more mm-hmm. like the originals. I think mm-hmm. that's for my, um, so my friend Joe, Creature of War, also wants to know, uh, what. so what comic books are you reading and what video games are you playing? Are you reading or playing anything? I'm not reading any comic books just yet. Actually, uh, later on today, I live right down the road from a comic book store, so uh, I, I'm probably going to head down that way while running some errands. Um, what am I playing in terms of video games? I am perpetually playing Mario Kart for Switch. Yeah. Uh, Mario Kart. Mario Kart 8 is fabulous. Um, I was just recently playing Crash Bandicoot. So yeah. Oh, I just got the one for Switch. Yes. It's so damn hard. It's it's hard, but it's so good and it just yeah. brings me right back to the you know, to the nineties when I'm just like, all right, why can't I beat this level? Oh my god, I just hit the TNT box. <laughs> um, but but Rocket League's also one of my favorites too. Um, they actually just introduced friend mode, or they are introducing friend mode, I believe, for Rocket League. Uh, so now you can go back to playing in, you know, playing your friends on different platforms. So pretty excited to have some friends out on uh, Long Island who I look forward to, to kicking butt with. By kicking butt, I mean I'm going to get whooped. But, <laughs> you know. <laughs> I am uh, I just finished playing Mega Man 11 for the Switch, which was the hardest game I've ever played. Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. If you guys have never played Mega Man, it's so damn hard. <laughs> um, just finished that and got the new Mario, new Super Mario Brothers Wii U or whatever it is for Switch. Got yeah. that been playing crash bandicoot i'm a huge switch fan um yeah and uh reading i'm actually reading a lot of shazam comics because i don't know too much about shazam and i'm kind of interested in the yeah. character yeah, the movie, the trailer looks, movie looks kind of fun yeah so I'm, I'm catching up on shazam and reading i'm reading a really cool ninja turtles and ghostbusters crossover comic book that i really dig oh they're gonna be doing yeah they're gonna be doing what is the crossover they're doing with teenage mutant ninja turtles and batman i think Batman and that, they did a comic of that which was good and then they're doing like a movie yeah yeah um, I just saw Warner Brothers post about that news I guess I guess 
<laughs> I play. Uh, I've been playing a uh, uh, NES Classic and Super NES. Nice. Yeah. So I have that. Because I, I don't know. I I think the latest console I play was like PlayStation Two. Like after that, I just like my patience is kind of like. Dude, you got to get a Switch. They're that, awesome. Yeah. That was, yeah. That was like- before the switch i was like when the switch came out i was like eh, i could go either way with this like you know i don't know if i buy one i have other things to save up for um and my boyfriend got me one for for my birthday i was like okay that's it it was actually at gary's house that we had a band function and uh pretty much everybody in the band has a switch we were all playing, so mario, kart. We were all <laughs> playing mario kart we had eight person mario kart going and it was it was a blast i was like okay I need one of these. Yeah. <laughs> the controller so. seems a little too small for me, though. I don't know. You can, yeah. I mean, you can get different. Like, there's a pro controller, which I really okay. recommend. Which, yeah. And it, Switch also has Breath of the Wild, which is the greatest game ever made in history. So. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so what's next for the band? We have a couple. Out? Yeah, we have a couple shows coming up. Uh, I'm not sure when this is coming out because we're playing oh. Friday at Starland. I'll probably just do it Tuesday. So yes. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So yeah. Friday night we're playing Starland Ballroom with Less Than Jake and Annie Flag and um, Jukebox Romantics. Then we have um, we're pretty clear until April. We have a, a our friends Joker's Republic, who are another ska band from New Jersey, are putting out a record in April. So we're playing their record release show with them and Mephiscopheles. So that's going to be fun. Cool. We're good friends with Mephiscopheles. And then a couple shows that we cannot announce yet. Some pretty fun festivals for the summer. Ah, oh, okay. That sounds and cool. then um, we've been kind of chatting about maybe writing some new music. Cool. That sounds yeah. Sounds like you'll be busy for a little while. Apparently putting out a covers EP now. <laughs> <laughs> I think you should. I think what you should do is you should get the fans involved and do polls and what songs that and have them pick the album for you guys. Then you got that's the not a that's not a bad idea. Yeah. I mean, it's. Yeah. Worth a shot. Give okay. the people what they Give want. Give the people what they want, as long as they don't want us to cover Sellout or Superman. Yeah, exactly. Those are like those are two of our absolute no goes. I love those songs, but like we would just sound the same doing them, you know? Do like like Aqua, like Barbie Girl, or like. <laughs> I always want to do like some. I'm. I would like to do some two tone songs, like done up in like our third wave punky style. Would be fun. Like I'm a big fan of like um, the Selector. Or um, the song "My My Boy Lollipop," I like. I always thought would be a good third wave song. So maybe we'll do some of that. Yeah. Uh, okay. That sounds interesting. And before you go, I have some questions here. I want to see if you guys want to do Gold Bloom trivia. Yeah, buddy. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. Gold Bloom trivia. I haven't done it in a while, so I figured I'd, you guys would be down with it. So. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah. Yeah. Here we go. If you win, I don't know what you can get. Maybe I'll give you a sticker <laughs> next time I see you. <laughs> there you go. You always take really cool pictures of us, so there, that's yeah. our plan. Oh. Uh, oh. Uh, oh. Uh, uh, life uh, finds a way. What are we waiting for? Let's do it. All right, number one. What was the name of the character? What was the name of his character in Isla of Dogs? Was it Spike, Ruff, Duke, or Earl? I saw that. I love Wes Anderson. I love that movie. And I think it was... You know the answer? No, I don't know the I answer. think it was Duke. Yes, yes. Yes. Yeah! Yeah, Duke is a... It's a great pop- name for a dog, yeah. It is. A pretty popular dog. Name. I love Wes Anderson. Do you like Wes Anderson? I do. Yeah. I, I'm not a fan, but... Moving on. No? Okay. 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 Yeah, I don't know. It's, it seems too... Uh, I don't know. Like I like the, that whole twee thing, you know? Yeah. I'm into that. <laughs> He's quirky, yeah. Um, yeah. Okay, number two. Where was Jeff Goldblum born? Was it Harrisburg, PA, Trenton, New Jersey, Los Angeles, or Pittsburgh? Hmm. Oh, gosh, I don't know. I, I think we would know if he's from New Jersey, so I'm going to roll that out. Yeah. Uh, I don't think it was L.A. Take a guess. I'm going to guess Harrisburg. Is that is that your answer? Yes. Yeah. No. Mm. Yeah. No, sorry. You were close, though. It's, it's Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh, okay. Oh. oh, well, we don't like Pittsburgh from the time we <laughs> had those horrible experiences there. Okay. okay. All right. Number three. What was the name of the Law and Order show that he was on from 2009-2010? He was on Law and Order? Yeah, he had a show for a spell. 
All right, Law and Order Special Gold Blooms Unit. All Final right. answer. No, no, <laughs> it's uh, it's Law and Order Cyber Unit, Law and Order Criminal Intent, Law and Order SUV, Law and Order LA. Cyber Unit, I don't think is a real thing. Yeah, this is familiar. SUV or SVU? I don't think he was on either of those. That's my <laughs> I said. S- I one? said SUV. <laughs> SUV, yeah. yeah criminal you little, intent. You guys a little crossover around, yeah. Yeah, um, criminal intent or LA. LA. Was LA a thing? I don't remember. I don't... I'm going to say criminal intent. Yes, yes. Yes. Yes, you're right. Nice. All right, All right. We got two so far. All right. Right? I think you got two. Yeah. I mean, we were in the yeah. same state for the other one, so you can give us three. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, number four. Who was the musical guest the night Jeff first hosted SNL in 1993? Was it A, Four Non Blondes, B, Collective Soul, C, Aerosmith, or D, Midnight Oil? Well, all of them had hit songs in, is it 1993 or 1994? It's 1993, yeah. I'm going to say Four Non Blondes. I was thinking Four Non Blondes also. All right, is that your answer? Yeah. Yeah. No. No. No, it was Aerosmith. Damn. Damn. But they they bet they performed Dreamin'. I guarantee like that's the that song. Or like Janie Got a Gun or one of those songs, maybe. One of those early 90s Aerosmith yeah. songs. All right. Okay. Um, We're last... terrible at this, apparently. Yeah. We're the worst. Okay, the last question. Finish this Jeff Goldblum popular meme. Jeff Goldblum is watching you sleep, bake, eat, or poop. It's all of those things, isn't it? Um, well, it's the most popular one. I don't know if people switch it around, but I think it's poop or sleep. I'm gonna say, yeah, I was thinking sleep. Sleep. Let's say sleep. No. Mm. No, it's poop. Damn it! <laughs> always go poop. You always gotta can go I, poop. Can I, can I plug a Jeff Goldblum thing that I am no way related to? Yeah, sure. Go for it. Have you ever heard of? There's this great Facebook page called "The Same Photo of Jeff Goldblum Every yes. Day." Dude, it's the best. At this, Beck, you gotta follow it. At the same exact time, every day, someone just drops the same photo of. And then get, everyone get just Goldblum. tags each other, and I get tagged in it all the time. Every yeah, time, yeah, and Jeff the comments are like the, news, the same tag tagged. of Gary on the same time of the oh same photo God. of the same pic. It's the best page. That's every so time funny. Jeff Goldblum's in the news, I get tagged for it because I have like yeah. we're like an unofficial Jeff Goldblum like fan club in a way. <laughs> so What's your favorite Jeff Goldblum movie? Probably it's probably between. Jurassic Park and Independence Day. It's, it, I like those characters yeah. the most. Yeah, yeah. Jeff. I mean, Jurassic Park's my all-time favorite movie, but I would agree with those two. And then he does a lot of good Wes Anderson movies. Just saying. Yeah, yeah. I know. You know who he needs to work with? There needs to be a Goldblum Tarantino movie. Mm. How has that not happened yet? Yeah, I'm surprised. probably because Tarantino's like winding down with movies, so he's probably like just kind of picks. The people he's working he, with. Like, he picks those interesting people, right? Yeah. And you know, Jeff Goldblum was in, was it the first Death Wish? I think he was in the first Death Wish. Oh, I, I, you're stumping me, actually. <laughs> Charles Monson. All right, now I'm going to ask you guys Jeff Goldblum <laughs> trivia. What was this character's name in Independence Day? David Levinson. Next. What movie was he in? The Fly. Next. There we go. Oh, my gosh. What movie was Jeff Goldblum in when he turned into a fly? <laughs> Yeah, that's a that would be some people. Yeah, some I still haven't seen The Fly actually. I I I'm not a horror fan, so that's I think that it would scare the shit out of me actually. So I just it just seems kind of creepy to him. I've seen photos of him as The Fly, and I'm like, yeah, no. It's icky. You ever seen The Fly? No. It's oh, icky. Oh, you are you okay? I'm asleep. Are we really oh, boring you with yeah. Goldblum questions? Okay, we put oh. sleep here, Becky. Jeez. <laughs> Sis. No, I'm an old lady and I'm in bed by 8.30. Becky's like thinking about saving life. the world and stuff over here. And we're thinking about Jeff Goldblum. No, I'm thinking about <laughs> like what I bought for dinner. And I'm thinking about the fact that Jeopardy's not on tonight at 7 o'clock. So. Oh, yeah. We're old and lazy, Brian. That's what you learned. <laughs> well, I'm older than you, so it's all right. Um, <laughs> Backyard Superheroes, your favorite old lazy ska band. Maybe you'll see them sometime. <laughs> bring us bring us a walker and yeah. some canes. Yeah. <laughs> that would be a good uh, theme to play on stage. That would. Yeah. It's Halloween, that's it. That's We're going to be old people. That would be actually. Show, do like, that next Halloween. Showing up with like 18. Yeah. <laughs> showing up with like 18 cats at my side, curlers <laughs> in my hair, a walker. Be the throwing cat lady from The Simpsons. Seriously, oh, yeah. I know. <laughs> <laughs> that's me. I was All right. Of, I don't know. 
my cat I think, is. But you, you, well, you did you did all right for the Jeff Goldblum. I, no one has been able to get all five of them right yet, so I don't feel. <laughs> Those are really right. tough questions. Those are really tough questions. I've listened to your show and I, I've heard you ask people, and I'm like, I got that one. I got that one. But yeah. when you're in the hot seat yes. and you're asking me about. SNL from 1993, and I never watch SNL. I don't know. <laughs> well, I yeah. figure 1993. I think like, who has a popular hit? I thought that might have been a good one. All those bands had popular hits in 1993. I was too young to remember anybody that had a popular hit in 1993. I'm sorry. I just, I, I'm not sorry. Like MC Hammer. In, in utero came out in What's that? Was it MC Hammer? No, or was it 1990? I'm thinking. No, that was 1990. Yeah. In utero came out in 1993. By Nirvana, I know that. Right. I don't. When know. I was born, uh, "Jump" by Criss Cross was number one on the charts. There you go. So. Wiggy weedy yep. whack. Exactly. <laughs> I'm trying to run, but they can't run like this. What? We should cover that. That would be so much fun. There you go. That All would right, be cool. a very interesting co- ska cover. Yes. There you go. Done. I'm not We're doing my dad. Jump, jump. <laughs> All right. Well, I got. I think I. Speaking of dinner, I think it's time for that time. Um, <laughs> but thanks for doing this interview. Uh, yeah. Check out hey, Backyard yeah. Super, Superheroes at Les and Jake and some other ska shows that are going to be playing throughout the year. And uh, I'll see you guys. I'll see you guys on the scene whenever that is. Hopefully. Thanks. Sometime. Sounds great. All right, thank you. Bye bye. Yeah. Take care. Bye, man.